Hello students and welcome to this video in section 1.5 of AP Calculus. In this video and in this section, we're going to be looking at continuity and we're going to be building our limit definition of continuity. And that's specifically what we're doing in this video. In our next video, we're going to be practicing with that definition that we're going to be building today. So let's get started. So when we start this, what we're going to do is we're going to build our definition using this graph over here on the right. But before we actually get into building that definition, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start with that table at the bottom so we can do a little bit of exploring. So let me scroll down. And so based off of the uh, graph, we're going to see, all right, uh, we're going to answer all these questions at all these different X values that are here on the left. Our first x value is x equal to negative 6. And we want to say, okay, is the function defined? If it's defined, what is its value? So let me look over here. So is the function defined? If so, what is its value? So right here, all I'm going to do is write, no, it's not defined. Okay. Well, what am I going to do next? Now the question is asking, what is the value of the limit of g of x as x approaches our value negative 6 from the left side? And so I'm following this from the left side now, and it looks like we're approaching a uh, positive five right there. So I'll put positive five here. Now, what is the value of the limit of g of x as x approaches negative six from the right side? So then the same value from the right side, we're approaching positive five from the right. Now I can say, okay, the limit of g of x as x approaches negative six, because I have both limits, the left and the right side, so I can say it's equal to five. And now we get our big question, is g of x continuous at x equal to a? And since the function is not defined there, we have that removable discontinuity, discontinuous, so it is not continuous. Moving into our next part, is the function defined for x equal to negative three? So let's go up and look at our function at negative three. And yes, it is defined here, it's defined um, and the function is equal to two come down here and it is equal to 2 so we'll say um, g of negative 3 is equal to positive 2 fantastic so what is the value uh, of the limit of g of x as x approaches negative 3 from the left side let's go take a look at that so negative 3 from the left side I'm going to follow it down and I get 2 and then on the right side is going to be negative 4 so 2 and negative 4. Well, in order, in order for the limit of g of x as x approaches a to exist, um, both the limit from the left side and from the right side over there need to equal the same value. So since they're not equal to the same value, um, this limit does not exist. And so then we need to start talking about this continuity here. What's the continuity? Well, we have a jump discontinuity, so the function is not continuous at um, x equal to negative three. Okay, in this part, we're gonna be looking when x is equal to zero, and um, let's see if the function is defined. Okay, so yeah, it's defined, it's equal to negative one right there. So I'll put negative one, so g of zero equals negative one. And what's the value uh, for the limit from the left side? Well, it's equal to the same thing, it's equal to negative one. And then from the right side, it's equal to the same thing. It's equal to negative one. And then what is the limit from both direction? Well, that's negative one. So now we're looking at the graph. We're looking at the line. We're going to be able to answer, is it continuous? And in this case, yeah, it's continuous the entire time. So let's recap what we've seen. Both the function and the limit are equal to the same value. And that is what's making this point continuous. The function is continuous at x equal to zero. So now let's explore x equal to two. All right, what's the function's value at two? Well, the function is undefined there. We have a vertical asymptote happening. So I'll write, is the function defined? No, there's a vertical asymptote. And so what's the limit as x approaches a from the left side? Well, what's the behavior of the graph from the left side? And it, well, it's going up. So we'll say, okay, it's, it's going up, up to infinity. It's approaching infinity. And then on the right side, well, this graph is following it down. And so we're say, okay, it's approaching negative infinity. 
the behavior is going down. So since those aren't matching up, we can't really talk about the behavior at that point from either from both directions. So the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 from both directions does not exist. And so is g of x continuous at x equal to a? No, it is not continuous there. So now let's look at it when x equals 6. Okay, I'll look at 6 now. All right, so the function is defined, and I'm getting 1 right there. So x equals 6, and yes, g of 6 equals 1. And so now uh, let's look at this when um, I'm looking at the limits from left and right side. So from the left side at 6, I'm going up to 4. And from the right side, I'm going at negative 2. So I'll put 4 and negative 2. And since those limits aren't matching up here, um, the limit does not exist. And then uh, we're looking at the graph again. We have that jump discontinuity happening. It's jumping from 4 going down to 1 and then jumping back down to negative 2. So that is a jump discontinuity. It is not continuous. And we have one more point we're going to look at, x equal to 8. So let's look at the value at x equal to 8. Oh, well, we got another discontinuity happening, another point discontinuity. Right there, the value is at negative 4. So yeah, it's defined g of 8 equals negative 4. So now let's look at the limits from both the left and right side at g of 8. So at g of 8, the limit from both the left and from the right side are pointing to the same value at negative 2. So okay, I could put negative 2 and negative 2. All right. And then what is the limit as x approaches it from both sides? That's both going to be negative 2. But do we have continuity happening here? No, we don't. So let's look at the similarities and differences from this entire table that's here. So we can see like when the function's defined and when the limits are equal to the same thing, then we're, the function's continuous. But it's more than that, okay? Because there were some where the function was defined and the, uh, the limit was defined, but it wasn't continuous. And that's over here in um, our last example right you can see okay our function came out to be negative four right there but then the rest of the limit came out to be negative two so it, we have to have that third piece that the limit and the function need to be equal to the same thing so let's write those down so the first thing that we need is that the function g of a must be defined so if the function is not even defined in the first place then we know it's not continuous the next thing that we need is the limit to exist. And so the final thing that we need is for the function and the limit to equal the same thing. So let's write that out. The function is equal to the limit at that point. So those three things, all three of those things are going to be um, what's necessary for a function to be continuous. So that's going to end the real notes section that we have here for uh, the definition of continuity. And this is going to be the, the limit definition of continuity. You'll be able to show that, that a function is continuous without ever looking at the graph that we have. So stay tuned for the next video as we're going to go over several examples applying our basic definition for continuity. See you then.